All right, boys and girls, I am now all ready to tie for you the next slide, which is uh, uh, parachute hopper. Um, and and this is a fly that is uh, sort of undersung. You know, the, the people that know about it know about it and love it. And uh, the people that don't, you know, everybody kind of thinks thinks of uh, uh, big foamy flies as, as hopper patterns. This is a lower floating hopper um, that's pretty delicate and uh, is nice for when you've got fish that are, you know, truly eating hoppers, uh, meadow situations. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty easy fly to see also. Um, so... What I'm going to start with here, I'm going to tie you a size 12. This is the other cool thing with this, is you can tie the slide down in smaller sizes. Um, but I'm going to tie it on a size 12 TMCO 5212. So that's a two extra long dry fly hook. And I've got some kind of gold colored Vivas 14 on. Um, and this will just match the body color. But I'm going to start my thread just up here behind the eye. And I'm going to wrap, oh, at least halfway down the hook here. And then I'm going to come forward to about 25% of the way back from the hook eye. And this is where I'm going to tie my parachute post in. Um, and we're just going to use calf body hair. Um, and I've stacked this up sort of ahead of time so you don't have to wait for me to do it. Um, the big trick on stacking calf body hair um, is to get it cleaned out well. That makes a huge difference. And I think I've got this bunch pretty well cleaned out. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to measure this about three-fourths of a hook shank long. And I want to clean out, so this is not a super tall wing. I want to clean out any, any short hairs I've got there. And I'll tie that wing in with a band of thread going backwards from that initial 25% initial back point. So I want to make that band of thread like so there. And then these butt ends I'm going to lift up and I'm going to come in from the back side and kind of cut them at a long angle. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I want to do with those butt ends is sort of build in some of our taper for our abdomen. So I'll continue to wrap back over those butt ends. And you can see that'll taper smoothly down and get all the way back to the bend. Then I'll come forward again. right up to the base of the wing. And this is where I'm going to stand the wing up. Um, so at this point, what I want to do, you see a loose hair in there. There's a few, they'll come out. I'm going to lift this wing up and peel it back. I'm going to build a thread dam right up against the front edge. Um, and you've got to sort of work this back and forth, building a ramp uh, that pushes up against the base of this wing. You know, anytime you do a hair wing, uh, particularly with calf body, because it's a stiff hair, it's non-hollow, um, you really got to wedge those thread wraps right up against the base, like so. I'll then grab that wing and take just a couple turns around the base to gather it together. And for right now, I can just leave that, leave that be. Um, I feel like we're not quite focused there. Why don't, we, why don't we let my good friend... There we go. My good friend, Mr. Nikon, do that for us. Um, so now for the rib, um, you can use conventional uh, single strand brown floss. I'm going to use a piece of super floss. So this is, uh, you know, rubber material like you use, um, like you'd use for a Pat's rubber leg. And I'm going to tie this in just off the back of that taper and wrap back over it to the bend. Um, and I'm going to use this as my rib. So once I've got that in place, I'm going to take some Antron dubbing. And what I've made here, um, let me get that back where you can see it. You can see that's bright and shiny. Um, this is yellow and ginger mixed together. I just hand mixed it. And it's, you know, pretty hoppery color, kind of, kind of tannish yellow. Um, and I'm going to take, you know, a fairly good bunch of this. And we're going to build our abdomen with this Antron dubbing. And Antron dubbing is a slick dubbing. It does it won't dub down as tightly as Superfine. And you could certainly use Superfine. Um, this is a Jack Schlatter pattern. And uh, this is what he used on it originally was Antron. So that's why I'm sticking with it. But I'm going to build this body starting from fairly skinny back here at the bend.
And I'm going to wrap forward, keep it a, a fairly thin body, right up to just short of the wing. And I've got more dubbing on there than I need. I've got a lot more dubbing on there than I need. Get the extra out of there. Tighten that last little bit up. And I'm going to bind down over that anyway, so I'm not really too worried about that being tight. So now I'm going to take my floss, and I'm going to evenly spiral, kind of wide spirals, this forward through the abdomen for the rib. And I'll tie that off just behind the wing as well, and then I can nick that out of there. Um, so there's a, another use for super floss that, that you've got in your bag that maybe you haven't thought of yet. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and put the wing in. And what I'm going to use here is this is a Ozark model turkey wing feather. Um, and I have sprayed this with clear fixative, clear spray paint. Um, you can also use vinyl cement and uh, uh, just coat it through the feathers so that these feather fibers don't separate. Um, so we want a coated feather for this wing. It's going to be tied down where it's free on one end. So if, if you don't use a coated feather, it will shred. Um, and what I want to do is cut a piece that's about as wide as the gap of the hook. like so, and I'm going to square the ends up, and kind of get an idea of my measurement. Of what I need for the length of the body. And then I'll fold that feather in half. <coughs> Excuse me, and from the folded side, I'm going to cut Kind of at a long angle here to create almost a point. You can actually see that's not quite pointed. I can shape them up a little bit. Round those edges off just a bit. So we've got sort of a rounded hopper wing. Now I'm going to take and gauge that length just beyond the bend of the hook. And I'm going to cut that wing off there. So it's cut to length. And I'm going to lay this in behind the wing and catch it with a couple turns of thread so that it is buckled around. And as I look at that, I think that might be a little bit wide. So rather than start over completely, I'm just going to peel a few fibers off of each side. Kind of clean this up a bit. Yeah, I think that's a little more like it. Like so. Yeah. I'm still not in love with that, so we'll we'll mess with it a bit more. But just like look away for a minute and I'll get this I'll get this all taken care of. It'll look good in just a second. Talk about Russell Wilson or something like that. There. Now I think we've got it a little better. Alright, let's square them up. Get them tied down with a few turns. Oh, so much better. That's a good case for um, don't go on uh, just continuing on, even if, it, if you know what's wrong. It ain't going to get any better. So fix it now is the, the time to fix it. Um, now, for the legs, what, I'm, what I've got here are some golden pheasant um, sections that I have knotted. And I've used a, uh, a macrame tool to knot those legs. If you watch my Dave's Hopper video, um, it's got a step-by-step -step of how to do that, but I don't feel like I need to do that again. Uh, but I'm going to take one leg and I'll put the knee right at the bend, and I'm going to tie them in along my near side here with three or four turns, try to get them square. Like so. And I'll take another leg and put that knee even. Just hold him in place and anchor that down. Um, if you get a leg, let's see if you can see this. Um, that leg's canted a little weird. You can take and twist these fibers and kind of pull on him a little bit and get him straightened out. Once we're happy with where he's at, I'm going to anchor those down and cut those butt ends out. And then I can trim those, the bottom half of the leg, you know, much shorter. So I've got two widespread kicker legs. 
and one giant strand of Antron that sticks out on this new camera like a sore thumb. So we'll get rid of that. All right, so now we're going to post our wing. And what I'll do here is I'm going to just grab that wing and start to build a few wraps on the thread post here. And I'm going to tie my hackle in. And what I've got here for my hackle, I just happen to have just a beautiful Cree neck. Um, and this feather is about the right size that he was laying on my desk. So I'm going to use a Cree feather. You could use regular standard grizzly, but I've got this Cree and it's just laying here. So I feel like I ought to use it. And I'm going to strip some bare stem um, that's going to be about equal. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a little frog in my throat this morning. I'm going to try not to tie this into my wing here. I'm going to tie this into the hook with the inside of the feather down. And then I'll stand it up against the wing and I'll start to wrap around the base. Now what I want to do here is turn, my feather's actually too long, I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter just so he stands up. I'm going to turn my bobbin upside down and I'm going to work around the base of this wing working up creating my post. And you can see I can kind of stand that post up using the tension on the thread. Get that post stood upright. I'm going to take a reverse wrap around the base of the wing and back again. So now my wing is upright and my hackle is tied in here against the far side. Or I'm sorry, it's my, my near side. So now I'm going to take a little bit more dubbing and we're just going to finish off the thorax here. And I'm going to twist this down. And again, you know, that this antron doesn't go on super tightly. You may need to tighten it as you go along. But it does build bulk faster than you think. And I'm going to dub from just behind the hook eye up to the base of the wing. And then over that tie down behind the wing, kind of tighten that last little bit up. And as I run out of dubbing, I've got about one more turn here. I'm going to come clockwise around the base of the wing. Then I'll come in and I'll grab my rotary hackle pliers and I want to pull this feather down so that the inside of the feather faces up. And now I'm going to wrap down that post. Just putting one turn under the last, five or six turns, pick up the thread and come around between the hackle and the dubbing to tie that feather off. Now when I get out here over the hook eye, I'm going to drop the thread on the far side, come up and around, and now I'm going around the hook again, and I can trim my feather tip out, like so. And I can come in and set up my whip finisher, kind of work this from underneath. Hopefully don't catch too many hackle fibers, looks like I did catch a couple there. Um, if you do, that's what scissors are for. Drop that wing a little more, and that is our finished parachute hopper. Now, um, anytime I tie a parachute, um, I like to put a little drop of head cement right in at the base, right against the base of the wing, and that'll stiffen up the base of that wing and help lock in those thread wraps where we've tied the hackle down. Um, so that just makes that a bit more secure as well. But um, that is uh, Schroeder's parachute hopper. Um, I may have said Potter's. Um, at any rate, it, it is Ed Schroeder's. Um, Ed Schroeder's parachute hopper. I'm not sure what I said before, but at any rate, um, that's it. And you can see how hoppery that is from the bottom. Pretty slender little bug. Um, you know, much more slender than the conventional hopper patterns uh, of the day right now. Um, and this is a good one for uh, kind of a change up. If everybody else is throwing big foamy stuff, this is a little bit more subtle um, and can often be a, a game changer, a closer. Um, uh, this is also, like I say, really good when you've got fish in real flat water sitting next to a bank eating those smaller hoppers. Um, this is a perfect opportunity to throw a, a parachute hopper. So there you go, Ed Schroeder's parachute hopper. Um, if I credited that to someone else earlier, um, it's merely because I'm old and forgetful. It happens to all of us, they say. We get all hope, huh? All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. Hit like and subscribe. Take care.